All right, so I showed you guys how to set up a test to do simple tension on this machine. But we have a more, couple more complex uh, tests that we want to do on these tendons. And so I'm going to show you how we can set up some of the more complex tests uh, using this rubber glove example. So we want to do both a stress relaxation test and we want to do a hysteresis test. And both of those will be a little bit different. So for this one, we'll start with a stress relaxation. Uh, fortunately, there's already a, a template method that lets us do uh, stress relaxation, and it's called this tension creep relax method. And so that was, that's what we're going to choose. And as before, we're going to ignore most of the inputs. We're going to go straight to test control, right? And we're going to go to test. And you see it looks very similar to the other one. With the, You have this ramp first, but then you have this hold. Right? And so that's what you're going to do with a, a stress relaxation test, is you're going to ramp to some amount of displacement, and then you're going to hold it there and watch what happens to the force. Right? So my control, of course, is going to be displacement again. Um, just like last time, we used 25 millimeters per minute uh, for this rubber glove, so that seemed to work, so I'll stick at that. And now we want to uh, decide when we want to start holding. And so it says start of hold measurement um, is going to be at some value, right? And so we're going to want to set that value of when we want to start the hold. And so let's just say I want to go to 10 millimeters to start the hold, okay? That seemed to be a, a decent distance based on what I observed from the glove from last time. And then you want to say, okay, how long do you want to hold it there? Okay, and so the end of hold criteria, again, is going to be a measurement event, but probably not displacement, right? Because we're not moving anymore. We're going to want just to have some sort of time, right? And so how long do we want to hold it there? And for, you know, simplicity of this video, I'm just going to make it 20 seconds. You guys definitely want to make that longer for when you're touching, uh, testing your attendance, like probably 60 seconds will be a better value. Uh, right, so what's going to happen, it's going to pull at 25 millimeters per minute. It's going to hold uh, when it hits 10 millimeters, and then it's going to hold for 20 seconds there. Okay, end of test. Um, really, we don't need to do a hold ton here. Um, it's already selected to do this. When it breaks, it's going to end, and at the end of the hold, it's going to end. Um, the other thing that I always want you guys to do is to make sure you set a measurement level of force of 0.8 to protect the load cell. Just in case we get high forces, we don't want to uh, overwhelm the load cell. Uh, for this one, end of test action, I'm going to just go immediately return. That way I don't have to hit the uh, buttons on the Instrom machine to return. Okay, so we set up test and end of test. Then we just do the other things like we did before. We're going to set up like probably our, our force on our console. We're going to do it in units of uh, newtons, right? And definitely our raw data. We're going to make sure we set our force units of newtons rather than kilonewtons. I don't know why I choose three decimal places. I feel like four is overkill on newtons, but I'll choose three decimal places. Uh, and then exports, right? We just want to make sure like I turn off the, the report all the time, but we want to make sure we're exporting raw data. Right, that's all I really want is the raw data. None of this other stuff I care about. I don't want to do it on demand. Like on demand is you ask it to export, and so that means you could forget. So that's why I like to change it to after each test. It's going to be a CSV file. It's going to export whenever we want. Again, file settings. You can choose whichever you want. I'm just doing desktop for this. It makes it easy. And now we're ready. So I want to save this method. Uh, again, I'm just going to save it to the desktop. And I'm going to call it um, Stress Relax. Okay, go home.
and now we're ready to run the test. And it's going to be very similar to what we did before. We're going to choose our stress relaxation method. It's going to tell us, okay, make sure you set your limits, uh, which we've already done. So we're going to hit OK on that. It takes a second. It comes up. Again, we'll zero out our force. Um, I already have this in a pretty good spot. I might pull it a little bit further, so I'm going to unlock the machine and just get it just, just a little bit tighter on here. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to zero it there, zero out the displacement as well. And now we're ready to run our test. Okay, very easy to run the test again. Just unlock, play, and it will start running. And so it's pulling at 25 millimeters a minute. When the displacement gets to 10 millimeters, it will stop and hold for 20 seconds. Which it did, and now it's holding at 10. And so you can see this glove material is not perfectly elastic, right? There is some um, definite stress relaxation going on as the force is decreasing despite the fact that we're holding at 10 millimeters. Okay, and when it's done, it will ask us to save it. Bring up the keyboard, just call it SAMP1 again. Okay, and we're done with this. And so then you could go ahead and you can load another sample in and rerun. Um, but remember, this one already returned uh, to zero displacement for us because that's how we set up the end of test. Okay, so that is how you set up a stress relaxation test.